live. Yay, thank you so much, Bonnie. I always have that little delay from my screen and I don't always know when we go live. So I appreciate that little <laughs> message, we're live. Hello everybody, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome to Brentwood Inspired Living Centers. Sunday morning fun. I am just looking down at my phone here because I'm gonna find us on our Brentwood Inspired Living Center uh, Facebook page. And I get the notification, so I just click right in there and we should be there live. Hello, hello. Once I see that we're live on our page, then I can connect with everybody and see all your comments and see who's logging in with us. So for some reason it's slow. Okay, there we go. Now I think I see you. Okay, I see you. Don is here. He says, hello, beloved pilgrims. <laughs> Good morning, Don. How was it getting in this morning? He had, there was some little funny thing last week, which was confusing. So let me know how that went. Good morning, Nancy. She says, you look and sound wonderful. Happy Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. She knows that that's my next question on the list. How do we look and sound? Can you see us? Can you hear us? <laughs> she jumps to it for me. Thank you. Good morning, Karen. Karen says, good morning. Say hi to Charlie. Hey, hello. There, hello, Jan. Jan says, welcome, Charlie. Kathy's here. Good morning, loud and clear. Thank you. Everybody knows the routine now. It's been, what, 30 something weeks. I mean, goodness, I don't even know, maybe close to 40. <laughs> Where wow. are we now? Uh, good morning, Jennifer. Happy Sunday to you, beautiful being of light. Luinda is here. Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, beloved souls. Uh, Sharon is here. Blessings to all. Thank you for being here. We're so glad. Thank you for tuning in with us this morning. Thank you for tuning in if you're watching the replay later in the week. We love that too. Leave us a message if you are here later in the week. Uh, we, we love you. We bless you. Good morning, Mary. I'm so glad you're here. So, um, we are just joining together in love. Yay. <clears throat> I see our numbers climbing up. I love to see that. That means we're all coming together. My name is Amy Van Ling and I'm the spiritual director here at Brentwood Inspire Living Center. It is so fun. It is my joy to be here and it's so fun to be here with you. I wholeheartedly welcome each and every one of you this morning. I'm sending you love and hugs, those virtual embraces, you know, we're, we're getting kind of used to that, <laughs> virtual hugs. I think Don always uh, signs his emails. What do you say, Don? Warmly with a virtual hug. He used to say warmly with a hug and now it's a virtual hug. <laughs> so happy December. It's our first Sunday in December. Can you believe it? I really can't. Our theme this month is compassion. Um, such a great theme. I think. And um, the very beginning of our shelter in place, I had a group. Uh, what did I call it? Oh, I called it the Compassion Lab. And I put a bunch of videos in there and different things about compassion. So um, if you'd like to jump in that group just to poke around and, and listen and see what's in there, just let me know and I'll add you to that group. Good morning, Dennis. Dennis is not too far from you, Charlie's in New York. So, and Maida, good morning, Maida, and Siggy and Jim says, good morning, sweet spirits. Yay, we're so glad to hear. Good morning, Beverly, and Peggy's here. Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. Happy December. We're so thrilled to be together. We kind of get giddy about being together around here. <laughs> Charlie knows that. He knows our community well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so today yeah. we have Incredible musician, speaker, lover of life, Charlie Thweet back with us. We were just chatting that it's been over two years, we think, right? Um, close to two years. Yeah. Close to two years since he's been with us because he's on the East Coast now. And so this is the perk of Zoom that we get to come together and the miles don't matter on Zoom. So I thought we're gonna jump on this opportunity. And so here Charlie is and I'm so grateful. I know we're all so excited to have him back with us and what an opportunity uh, that Zoom makes these connections possible. Uh, long distances are not so long. So we're thrilled to have Charlie. His message today is everyone's carrying something. Now, isn't that true? <laughs> so, 
Welcome, Charlie. We're so grateful. So, so grateful to have you with us. And after the message today, we're having a concert at 1130. That's and right. that is on a different link. And that's on our homepage, BrentwoodILC.org. And you'll see Charlie's uh, picture for the talk today. And then right next to it, you'll see the Zoom link for the concert. And that concert's on Zoom where we all jump on Zoom. So meet us there at 1130. It's going to be fun. We get to enjoy Charlie's music, which has been too long since we've got to bask in. So um, wonderful opportunity. Thanks. That's a, like a one hour concert, right? One hour, 1130 one to 1230. And, um, you know, if you have to you cut out a little early, that's, we're not going to <laughs> keep you there. So, so pop in and join us. It's going to be really, really great. That's fun. Um, and we have Bonnie, our beautiful Bonnie Daniels here with us today. She is here to share inspirational reading and our abundance message. And we are so grateful for you, Bonnie. Thank, Thank you. you for zooming in with us. <clears throat> I told her with her red red necklace and my green, we're really Christmas out this morning. <laughs> we're very festive. Uh, good morning, everybody. Wow. Okay. I looked up for a minute and let me see. Ginny's here. Good morning, Ginny and Dusty and Carol, Randy, Robin. Hi, Robin. How are you? Paris is here. Good morning, dear friends, she says. Oh, it's such a beautiful community. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, shining your light here. I feel it. I appreciate you so much gratitude beloved souls yes yay okay so we are on our last week of collecting and guess what we have so many gifts for the wallen house women and we have gift cards for the children and we are so grateful we are totally stocked up with what we're going to bring to these um people and families and we are so overjoyed thank you thank you for all your contributions nancy and florence will be here wednesday for a drive-through drop-off they are um i've deemed them essential volunteers because i know we have um what are we calling it stay at home order happening so except right. for essential workers so they are essential volunteers because they're doing lots of work in the community and so they are florence will be collecting the recyclables nancy will be collecting all the non-perishable foods and socks we still need socks new socks so bring the socks you can throw them out your window and <laughs> whatever you need to do drive by throw them out and uh, nancy will be here to collect those so thank you thank you thank you we are um overflowing with abundance and i i'm so grateful just thrills me to deliver these gifts to these beautiful people. So thank you for contributing. So if you or anyone you know would like affirmative prayer, please let us know. We are um, just so excited about prayer around here. Bonnie is uh, one of our prayer team leaders and so is Betty and uh, they lovingly hold your prayers. They send them out to our uh, prayer and angel team and trust me, lots of care, attention, love go into those prayers. So call on us if you feel um, called to. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Florence. Yay. Everybody's here. Good morning, Heidi. We're glad you're here. That's Charlie's better half. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> We're so glad you're tuning in with us. Wonderful. Okay, so we will go ahead and move into our service this morning, and I will keep my eye on all of you right here. Send me in your comments and your hearts and your thumbs up. I love to to feel your presence here. It's very uh, exciting. I, I definitely feel all of you. So thank you. Thank you for joining in this moment with us. Very exciting. So I'm going to open us with our mission statement. If you just feel into this with me, we are an open heart-centered spiritual community honoring the one presence within us we welcome all to connect grow and expand in wisdom compassion and love yay thank you for being here i am so grateful good morning debbie all right so we're going to hand it over to bonnie she has our inspirational reading this morning thank you so much bonnie we appreciate you thank you our <clears throat> prosperity blessing today starts with, I invite you to join me now to, in our prosperity blessing. We come together today, opening our hearts and minds to the one spirit, the light, infinite mind, knowing that there is only one power and one life, and that is the life of spirit. 
we affirm that we are one with spirit and there is no one, nothing that is separate from this oneness. We are one with the infinite mind that was created all, this, all that is. We know that the divine qualities of peace, power, plenty of wisdom are all already within each of us. And we embrace those qualities now. We step forth in the truth of who and what we are, saying yes to prosperity, our harmony, our health, our order, and our love. And with the greatest gratitude, we accept this transformation of consciousness for ourselves. We know that it is done and we give thanks. Now we release, we let go, and we let the spirit do its perfect work. We trust the universe to provide for us and it is done and it is so. Thank you for our prosperity blessing, Bonnie. I appreciate you so much. Charlie has our first song for today. We're gonna get a lot of music today. I'm so thrilled. Yay, thank you, Charlie, hand it over to you. Okay, and this song is called You Are Light. And it's just a reminder of the essence that we all are. There's a singing in your heart And a light that shines in all that you are bringing through See it glow, let it lead you on your way And the love you feel within Is the love without which you know you would not be you Watch it grow and remind you you're the way Cause you are light, yes you are, and that's the real you. You are light, yes you are, and that's the deepest truth. You are light, and your love is always shining through. You are It's a rising that will never drop away again Leaving you with the truth of who you are Let it filter through your mind Cleaning out the darkened thoughts that you were letting in That wasn't you And it's time you leave the dark Because you are light, join me Yes, you are, and that's the real you. You are light. Yes, you are, and that's the deepest truth. You are light, and your love is always shining through. You are light. There's a singing in your heart, and a light that shines in all that you are. See it glow, let it lead you on your way. And the love you feel within is the love without which you know you would not be you. Watch it grow and remind you you're the way. Cause you are light, yes you are. Yes. Yay. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to hand it back over to Bonnie for our inspirational reading. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. 
<laughs> our, um, this month has been uh, compassion, or it is compassion month. Uh, compassion is our theme for the month of December. Today's reading comes from the Daily Word from November uh, and December 2020. I am a source of compassionate understanding. All the world's people want to feel seen and heard and be loved and accepted. We all have struggles and insecurities and fears. If it takes time to explore the things I find most difficult to love in others, I will likely discover they come from something unhealed in myself. I may even reveal wounded parts of myself that if I, if met with understanding and love can be healed. Today, I choose to give the gift of compassion to others and myself. I extend a tender heart and a loving hand to everyone I meet, helping to create an understanding and compassionate environment for all. I am grateful for the healing that happens in this environment and the bless and bless all those who make it possible. Again, I affirm, I affirm, I am a source of compassionate understanding. And here are just a few of the many ways we can continue to align with our prosperity. We can join the community in making conscious contributions to our center by pay, PayPal, Zelle, or even writing an old fashioned check and mailing. Bring in food and gifts for our, our Christmas collection for Wal the Wallum House and Loves and Fishes. <clears throat> we need a hundred pairs of socks reach our, to reach our goal of 200 pairs for Loves and Fishes. Bring in your bottles and cans for recycling and Florence takes care of that. Go to our giving page on the website to contribute to our tithing commitments for the month. And join a team to clear and clutter the clutter in the closets in our center and reorganize resources during this month of December. You can call Jan or Nancy to come up to date with the uh, closet clearing. And thank you very much. And I know that you'll give all you can today. <laughs> thank you so much, Bonnie. We appreciate all those reminders. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Okay, I've got to read some of the comments real quick before we go to the second song, Charlie, because everybody is just like pouring out the, the gratitude. Aww. So, um, so much gratitude. Oh, where is that? Sharon says applause. I know sometimes it's hard because you can't hear it, but we're just all applauding. Uh, so beautiful, Charlie brings tears to my eyes. Linda says, thank you for inviting us to join you, Charlie. Uh, we sound great together. I love that part too, Paris. Yeah, Charlie is like masterful at that. He, he's always been like right in the middle, just join me and just so beautiful. Thank you. John says, yay, Charlie, so good to hear you again. We are light, says Pat. That brought me to tears. Thank you so much, Charlie, for sharing your gift and touching my heart. Jennifer shares. Yay. So wonderful to hear Charlie and the sing along. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. We're ready for more then. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Handing it back over. Thank you. Thank you. So this song is called Tell Me Stories. And this is from an album that came out. Um, actually two months after the last time I saw you guys. So I, I put out another CD. Um, it's called Tell Me Stories. This is the title track. Tell me stories of the many glories that you got yourself into. And all your in the sky of blue You can call me if you fall for the lies that people throw at you Cause you're much greater than any hater when you could come right home to what is true So 
why don't you Will you find it there In so many places Wherever you go Will you find it there In all of your searching Just what do you know Tell me stories amazing song i love that tell me stories of the glories isn't that true right there's some quote out there about uh, instead of talking about your complaints and problems talk about your blessings and that's that's what that's all about tell me stories of your glories oh i love love the song appreciate you charlie so much We're so glad to have you with us Bonnie, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Since Charlie's wearing two hats, he stays on with us. <laughs> so we say goodbye, Bonnie. We love you. Thank you for bringing Bye, us Bonnie. reminders and messages this morning. We appreciate you so much. I'll see you on thank the other you. side. Okay. Bye. Okay, here we are with Charlie. I'm so thrilled. Um, I am going to read you a little bit about Charlie so you get to know him a little bit better. I think most of us know him pretty good, but we'll a little bit more. Charlie is a musician, speaker, and transformational life coach. He and his wife Heidi moved uh, two years ago from Santa Cruz to Connecticut. As a young man, he took a huge leap of faith from his budding architecture career into the touring life of a full-time spiritual presenter. Since 1981, Charlie has inspired tens of thousands of people in 15 countries on six continents. He has also been the musical opener for such luminaries as Wayne Dyer, Marianne Williamson, Deepak Chopra, Ram Das, Tony Robbins, and Louise Hay. Charlie has 18 life-changing music albums and has appeared on national television and radio. And a wonderful being, loving soul. And I just have to tell the story. The first time I ever met Charlie, had Charlie's experience, I it was here in this this center and i believe it was like 2013 ish and 
it was one of my first times here and you had us sing that song is it you are an angel where you look at another oh yes and you stand in front of somebody else you know in the room so it was just like the person next to me and i didn't know them and it was just like this flood of tears to just look so deeply for so long into someone else's eyes right and sing yeah. to them it was just such an amazing beautiful experience so um yeah i still remember that and it's just Charlie does wonderful things like that all the time. Thank you. So we are we are thrilled, thrilled to have Charlie with us. So I'm going to pray us in and then I'm going to hand it over to Charlie for his message this morning. And then we'll come back for if you have any uh, questions or comments, we'll just do a brief little Q&A um, time. And then we're going to log off and get right onto our Zoom link for the 1130 concert, which we need a little break to get a drink and come back and get ready to sing and do all this good stuff. So, <laughs> I invite you to breathe in with me. Just take a holy breath. Oh, as we take this, this breath of gratitude, and feel into this vibration of being grateful. We allow ourselves to just feel the center of our being, the essence of who we are, pure peace, divinity. We are so grateful to be alive. We're so thankful to be able to connect in this way, this ability to, to connect, commune together. We are unified with the one presence, the one power, knowing that we are one with this limited, limitless love, this limitless intelligence, divine intelligence. We open up to inspiration. We open up to the unknown, to all that there is, to infinite possibilities. We are so thankful and grateful to nurture one another by joining together in spirit. Our prayer is thank you. Thank you to spirit guiding us. Thank you that the power and presence is here now, within, today, every day, every moment. We say yes. We say yes to our divine self and that we're set free from anything and everything which holds us into a space where we have forgotten that we are the I am that I am. We are whole, healthy, holy. We are renewed again and again and again. We take this breath of love and we open our hearts and minds as we bless Charlie. We say yes to the power within, yes to the divine wisdom and wellness, and we open our hearts wide to Charlie's message. I release this word for all. And so it is. Amen. Ashe, namaste. Thank you for being with us, Charlie. Handing it over to you. We okay. appreciate you being here. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, I have one little ditty of a song I want to start this off with. And this is, uh, it's a little kind of, I've really only played it in workshop and retreat settings. So I've never really played it this kind of audience, but it's just a simple little kind of ditty about compassion. So if you find yourself singing at home, please just add your voice. Compassion, 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 compassion. Compassion, just take it to heart. Compassion, do you believe you deserve it? Compassion, just take it to heart. Compassion, compassion, just take it to heart. Compassion, do you believe you deserve it? Compassion, just take it to heart.
And you'll say, thank you. I feel you out there, even though I can't see you. So the, as, uh, as Amy mentioned earlier, my talk is called Everyone's Carrying Something. And you know, I've been threatening to write uh, a talk on this, on this title for years. That, that, that idea came to me years ago. And it, it's so true, isn't it? Everyone's carrying something. You know, and we don't necessarily see it. Often many things are below the surface. But it, just even thinking about that engenders compassion for whomever we're with. Everyone's carrying something. Everyone's carrying something. Well, I, uh, I, want, I love starting a talk with a, with a joke. I do have a new joke for you. So let me just run this one by you real quick. And uh, this is about, this happens at a shopping mall. And there's this older man and he's wandering around and he, uh, he approaches a young woman and he says to her, you know, excuse me, I, I can't seem to find my wife. Uh, can you just talk to me for a couple of minutes? And, you know, this woman, she feels a compassion for this old man, can't find his wife. And she said, well, well, sure, of course, sir. Um, uh, do you have any idea where your wife might be? And the man says, well, I have no idea. But every time I talk to a pretty woman, she seems to appear out of nowhere. <laughs> So <laughs> there's your joke on compassion. <laughs> I'm glad I see Amy cracking up, so I'm glad you enjoyed that. <laughs> well, um, I've, in looking at compassion, I, I've been thinking about this uh, for several weeks and you know, knowing this talk was coming. And, and I realized I want to look at it in three levels. And this is going to, I'm going to look at compassion for self, compassion for others, and then compassion for humanity. And just and how that occurs in our lives, how we can engender that more. Um, so let's look at compassion for self. You know, the Buddha, there's a great quote from the Buddha. He says, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. If your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. And that reminds me of the, uh, the in scripture where Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And many of us have begun to realize, oh, yeah, that includes loving myself. Because, you know, growing up, we may have always thought, you know, we're focusing on love your neighbor, love your neighbor, love your neighbor. But it's good to remember the as yourself part, isn't it? And again, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. And as we can really step into loving ourselves, forgiving ourselves, then we can forgive others and, and the vice versa. So... I want to look at a, at a time that happened for me where I kind of needed to forgive myself and have compassion for something that happened for me. And this involves the birth of my son. So this was, he's 32 now, so this goes back a ways. And I was married to a, a woman named Lori, that's uh, Jeremy's mom. And, and uh, Lori was, you know, we were approaching the, the day of the birth and the, the labor had begun. And... Uh, and this labor, we had a midwife and we had all very, uh, very great new age plans for our home birth. We had, uh, had rented a hot tub and, uh, and it was going to be a water birth at home with a midwife. And have you ever noticed that plans don't always go as you expect? Uh, after 17 hours of labor and it really wasn't progressing, the midwife said, well, I think we're going to need to go to the hospital to stay safe. So we're going to have to let go of the home birth and the water tub birth. And so we got in the car and drove to the hospital and uh, she got an IV and then a fetal monitor to watch the heartbeat of the baby. And suddenly things seemed to progress and move forward. And uh, that was eventually the, the birth did begin to happen at 23 hours into labor. So that was a while. And I was in the, in the operating room, you know, with the doctor and, and Lori, and I had this, they put a, a hospital gown on me and a mask, you know, back then we didn't all wear masks and, and, uh, and I overheat normally, you know, regularly anyway, and now putting a gown on me and a mask, I was starting to feel overheating and I couldn't really breathe. And then there came a point where the doctor said, well, I, we don't want her uh, perineum to tear. We're going to do an episiotomy. So he gets out these scissors and starts to cut. And I'm, and I, I'm sitting there looking at this and, and I get queasy easily. So this was not an ideal situation on any level for me. And I started to feel faint. I had to leave the room. Now, I had already started to see the beginning of Jeremy's head, you know, the, his, the hair on his head. He had a lot of hair, even at birth. But I had to leave before the whole thing happened. And 
and I'm out of the room. There's a friend helping me and putting, you know, a, a wet towel on my forehead and helping me breathe. And and, uh, and suddenly in the other room, I hear a baby crying, saying, oh, my God, I missed the birth. And that's that's one of the sadder moments in my life because I wanted to be there for my child's birth. And but I, I, I get faint. This is part of how my body works. And and I, I realized I have to have compassion for the parts of my life that don't go the way I want them to. And that was that was sad. There's some emotional suffering around that. And I feel like I can never get that back. But we need to have compassion for ourselves to hold ourselves in kind regard, even when when things don't flow the way we want them to. You know, nobody died, no one's lost any body parts, but it was a it was a sad moment for me and really yearning and looking forward to that and not to be able to be there to welcome him into the world. And just to hold myself with compassion. You know, uh, another thing showed up in this last week and uh, another time for me to really just hold myself in love and in kindness. And, you know, with this whole COVID situation, there's a lot of connection that's not happening. You're what you're well aware. And one of the ways it shows up the most for me is that, you know, I live in Connecticut and my 91 year old father lives in California. And I normally would visit him, you know, every two, three months, the way life normally flows. And I haven't seen him since March and uh, I'm missing my father. And I was talking to Heidi about that, my wife, the other night, and this sadness was welling up in me. And I can feel it just talking about it, that I was like, I miss my dad and I, I want to spend time with him. And one of the one of the things he often says when we're together is he says, Charlie, you know, it's just great to be breathing the same air. We don't have to do anything in particular, it's just being together, just spending time. You know, we might be just playing a little game of dice on the kitchen table or sitting on the couch and watching an old Columbo episode. It doesn't matter. It's just that being together. And so a few nights ago, I was just feeling my sadness around that. And and I started crying. I was inconsolable. I could not stop crying in that deep missing of that connection. And I, I started to see myself as a six year old boy just who couldn't stop crying. And and I wanted to hold that boy and just hold him with compassion and and just kindness and understanding. It's important that we see ourselves that way. That we hold ourselves with compassion. If your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. So the, the second area I want to look at, as I said, is compassion for others. And you know, Mark Twain, he has a wonderful quote, maybe you've heard this kindness. And for me, kindness and compassion, I equate, they're practically the same thing. Kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Isn't that beautiful? Kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. It's an energy. You know, you, we don't need our sight or our hearing to know that there's kindness happening around us. And then there's a quote from Plato. Uh, he said, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a harder battle. And that really equates with the title, everyone's carrying something. It's again, that, that unseen journey that so many people, the, the pain and the suffering that they're holding. You know, in, in doing this talk, I decided, let's look up some definitions of compassion. And there's one here that I love. It says, it's the sympathetic consciousness of others distress with a desire to alleviate it. It's that consciousness of distress that other people are going through and with that desire to help to alleviate it. So, you know, compassion is not pity. It's not pity. It's just holding the space with people and, and being there to help alleviate it. You know, I have a, a neighbor across the street. Uh, he, Barbara and, and Frank live across the street. I got a call from Barbara a couple of weeks ago and, and, and Frank uh, had a stroke a few uh, years ago and now he lives in a wheelchair. And she, she called and said, hey, can you come over right away? Frank fell out of the wheelchair and I need help you know, lifting him back up. You know, so I strapped on my face mask and, and went over and they were wearing their masks. And I came and just helped lift him off the floor into his chair and just, just to be there in support you know, to alleviate the suffering, to help in a situation. It wasn't about pitying Frank. 
but just you know being there in kindness and ready in, at, at the beck and call to be be helpful i have another story to tell you of, of something that happened i know some of you know i i do a lot of tours to italy and these are usually about two weeks long and you know groups of eight ten twelve people I have to say I haven't done any this year, and that's it's a little sad to me. We'll see how next year goes. But this was a few years ago, and, and there's a, a woman on the tour, and we'll we'll say her name is Michelle, and uh, she uh, she seemed to always not quite blend in with the group, and seemed a little bit to feel like the world revolved around her. You know, she was the one who'd always be late. You know, when we'd say let's meet at, at ten o'clock in the lobby to go to the museum, she'd come at ten after or fifteen after, and We'd be all sitting around waiting for Michelle, and and um, so and, and after you know she had a roommate, you know she was in a double room, and after about three days, the roommate said, "I can't do this anymore. I need to switch roommates." And no one else wanted to switch. No one wanted to be Michelle's roommate. And finally, someone volunteered out of their kindness, and and it worked well enough. So it came to the end of the tour, and we were ending in Venice, and. We all got ourselves to the Venice train station and people were going different directions, either to the airport or on to you know, further travels. And there was this one couple named Greg and Susie and they were uh, getting on a train to go to Milan. And, you know, and Michelle and I were standing there and, and we decided to you know, say goodbye to them, give them hugs. And we even kind of, we got on the train and talked to them at their train seats, knowing we'd have to leap off before it went down the tracks. So, so I, you know, it was about two minutes before the train's departure. And I said, well, hey, Michelle, we need to get off the train. Uh, you know, it's about to take off and, you know, the trains don't wait. And, and uh, so I got off and she said, I'll be there in a minute. And uh, I waited on the platform outside the train and a minute goes by and I, I stick my head back on, hey, Michelle, you need to get off. You know, we got one more minute and I'll be there, I'll be there, she says. And I get off on the platform and another minute goes by and the train doors close and the train starts heading out the station. and with Michelle on board. And, and uh, a couple of minutes later, I get a text uh, from Greg. He says, hey, uh, looks like Michelle didn't get off in time, but she talked to the porter and she's gonna get off about 15 minutes and uh, she'll, she'll get another train back and, and wonders if you'll wait for her to come back because I know you guys were gonna get train tickets. I said, sure, I'll wait, I'll be here. And uh, part of me was laughing, like, you know, karma has struck and Michelle, you know, keeps not playing by the rules, but the trains do. And there she goes down the track. A little bit of me was that kind of little bit of sibling rivalry. You know, nah, 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 you got caught. But another part of me said, sure, I'll wait. And because we had made plans for me to help her buy tickets for her further travels. And and uh, so she, she got back off the train eventually. And we all, you know, with kind of a sheepish grin. And we had a good laugh. And I was happy to help. And I, uh, you know, just why not embrace a situation with compassion? I was chatting with a friend last week and she said, really, there are only two choices uh, how we're going to be with people. It's either condemnation or compassion. And the question I think for all of us is, you know, which of those do we want to live in in our minds? Do we want to live in a world of condemnation or just compassion, openness, love, kindness? So that's what I chose and that felt better. We had a good laugh and nobody got hurt. So compassion for others. So I want to look at the third area, compassion for humanity. And, uh, you know, now is a perfect time to look at that because, you know, everyone on this planet is going through the same thing. I mean, this is a, this is a pivotal moment in consciousness on this planet. I know it's a, it's, it's difficult and challenging, but it's also, Hey, for the first time, really that ever that we can remember, we're all in the same boat in dealing with this same issue. Do you remember back uh, in the 50s and 60s, well, I don't know if you all remember the 50s and 60s, but there used to be a, people would say, wow, if, if just an alien invaders would invade the earth, maybe then we'd all come together as one humanity to fight a common enemy. And we kind of have that situation. I'm not sure we're doing a great job as a common humanity, but uh, it's an opportunity to, and, and it's an opportunity to have compassion for everyone for all of humanity, because we're all in the same boat. And we can, we can extend that to everyone as a whole and step into that. I came across a cute story and I want to read it to you. Um, and this, this kind of says it in a different way. And this is called Leaning into Children's Sense of Humanity. 
it's, it's just a brief paragraph. A teacher friend of mine was teaching a math class, was teaching math to a class of six, six year olds, many of whom were recently arrived refugees from other countries. So the math topic was fractions. My friend defined what a half was and what a quarter was. And then she asked the children to write down whether they would prefer a half or a quarter of a chocolate bar. As she walked around the room, she noticed that some of the new students wrote that they would prefer a quarter of the chocolate bar. My friend thought she was going to have to reteach this lesson because they didn't appear to understand that a half was bigger than a quarter. She asked the students why they would prefer a quarter of the chocolate bar and one little girl replied, so that more people could have a piece of chocolate. It's not a beautiful story about the natural kindness and compassion that kids have. Isn't that beautiful? So more people could have chocolate. That's sweet. That's, that's kindness, isn't it? And it was innate in these young six-year-olds. You know, I was talking about the global health crisis, you know, and, and compassion for humanity. You know, another thing, which is kind of an elephant in the room in this country is on a national level, we seem to have, you know, two very distinct mindsets that are at odds with each other. And they seem to be about 50% of the country, you know, politically speaking. And that's an invitation for compassion too, isn't it? You know, we, we talk about unity, this church it comes out of unity, but so many ways our, our society shows up in duality, in competition, in, in a sense of separation. And we're invited to step into unity, to can we see oneness in this, in this country, in spite of the temptation to see separation, the temptation to see the other who's against us. You know, uh, are we coming from love? Are we coming from duality in, in any of these choices? And, you know, making fun of the other side isn't helping. If we really want unity, if we want to move away from a sense of separation, it's an invitation to have compassion for what the other side is experiencing. What, what are they feeling? What is their suffering? Can we step into compassion? You know, even when maybe it's not, it doesn't feel comfortable or, or natural. You know, the Dalai Lama has a great quote about this. He said, love and compassion are necessities. They're not luxuries, they're necessities. We, without them, humanity cannot survive. Love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. And Thomas Merton, an American mystic, he said, compassion is the keen awareness of the interdependence of all things. And I think that's kind of where the children were coming from with the, with the chocolate bar, weren't they? They, they saw their interdependence and, and it engenders compassion. They saw, if you're one with everything, why wouldn't you want to love everything as much as you love yourself? You know, stepping into that oneness, into that sense of compassion for everyone. <clears throat> well, I want to, you know, start to close and, and look at, so we've looked at uh, compassion for self, compassion for others, compassion for all of humanity. <clears throat> and what, what, and I was, began to think, what is the ultimate expression of compassion? What would be the ultimate expression? You know, even when you feel burdened and attacked, can you muster up some compassion? Can you express your heart's love even when you're under stress? And maybe the best example would be what this one man did. He was, he was being tortured, beaten, whipped, and eventually executed. And what did he come up with? What did he find to say in that situation? He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Talk about compassion. He's being beaten, whipped, tortured, and eventually executed. And what he chooses to see is that they're carrying something, you know, that they have a history, they, they have this, their, their life's history has brought them to this point, and this is the best they can do. Forgive them, they know not what they do. Can we step into that level of compassion with each other to see beyond what seems like attack. Everyone's carrying something. It's brought them to where they are today. And this is part of all of our awakening. And as we just keep stepping forward, let our compassion bring that awakening forward in everyone. 
let the Christ in us step forward and see from those same eyes. Kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Let us always remember everyone is carrying something and meet them with compassion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlie. That was so beautiful. And what was absolutely, I mean, it was all exquisite. And the question had been asked, what was that quote he said about kindness? And then you just intuitively <laughs> yeah. repeated it. So there you go, uh, Pat. I think it was Pat that asked. Wow, such, such beautiful reminders and um, stories. I love Thanks. stories. I like the way that you... Um, delivered that with compassion for self, compassion for others, and compassion for humanity. Your um, chocolate bar story reminded me of a video I saw of a bunch of children who were asked what, the thing that they wanted for Christmas, and they had these big grand, you know, requests, like a big toy or Xbox or something, and then they, they, they were given that, and then they said, what would your parent want? You, what would they really, really want? And they decided something, and then they asked, well, if you could only pick one now, which would you pick? You know, the thing you chose for yourself or the thing for your parent? And all of them picked the gift for their parent. It was, just, it was just amazing, you know, just to see that that compassion and children just naturally, they don't even think about it, right? It wasn't even like, they didn't even have a moment where, hmm, well, some of them have sort of a moment like, oh, I really, but they, you know, it's like, no question. I My mom really needs this or my parents need that. So Very thank sweet. you, Charlie, for poetic and touching sermon. Garrett says that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nancy says this message hits home. Thank you. Sharon says, thank you, Charlie. John says, thank you, Charlie, for these important reminders. Yes. Garrett says with compassion, there is no room for hatred or anger against anyone, especially those you would otherwise despise. Everyone is doing the best they can. And if they are missing out or failing, that is our opportunity to help them heal and learn. Beautifully said. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you. Yeah, I went saw a video and I'm not really a big tennis um Band. I don't really watch tennis, but it was a tennis match, a big one. It looked like some kind of important match. And um, the, the gentleman who lost the match was crying. And then his son came out to the, you know, court and he was gathering up his bags. And then the other player, it, the crowd was, you know, applauding and, and the other player just like stood there like, and he's sort of was tearing up and, and crying. And there was just such a moment of compassion there. It's like, you know, I won and I'm glad yet I have so much compassion for you where you're at at the moment, you know, and yeah. it was a beautiful, it was just a really beautiful scene. I'd love to see that. Yeah. yeah I'll send you the, the link. Thank you. Yeah. I'll post it here too. It was really beautiful. Wonderful and truthful message, says Luinda. I so love your message, Charlie. Thank you, Beverly. Carol says, children must have an innate capacity for compassion. I think I, that's what I've seen. Yeah. That means we all do. <laughs> we were all <laughs> children, right? We all have a child inside. Uh, Karen says, I don't get to come to the concert. Please tell Charlie. One of the things I remember most in Italy is singing under the bridge in the rain. Thank you. Your talk was fantastic. Oh, wonderful. So she was in Italy with Charlie yeah. um, before COVID would before take. Before COVID. Yeah. Karen Mingus. Yes, Karen yeah. Mingus. Hi, Karen. Yeah. So we'll miss you at the concert for sure. Yeah, I bet you I can only imagine singing under a bridge in the rain in Italy. How perfect. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah, really. Soon, right? Coming up this year. Uh, Bonnie says, I really like your music, Charlie. Yes. Thank you. Charlie just has a very special way, doesn't he? Wow. Beautiful beauty. Thank you all for being here and, and sharing in this time with us and the beautiful message Charlie brought us and reminders. Uh, what did I write down there or something? Oh, I love the, the compassion is not pity. You know, it's just holding space for someone. Mm -hmm. I think that's, it's really so important to yes. like your song, you know, you weren't angels really seeing the light in, in someone rather than, oh, poor them and 
pitying a circumstance or situation is truly is truly seeing their essence right that's yeah. compassion and i like what your friend said you can be towards somebody else in condemnation or compassion and i think that's true <laughs> yes yes yeah. it's like what choice yeah beautiful beautiful stuff we appreciate you so much love pouring out thank you all for being here and joining us this morning and now we will see you on the zoom link which is on the uh facebook homepage brentwoodilc.org it's there and i'm also going to drop it right here on this page it's also in our connection group um i posted that last night but i'll post it again here so that we have Everywhere you click, you can click right into the Zoom link and we will see you there at 1130. I don't know what time it is right now. Okay, it's right on the hour. So we have a half an hour to get a snack, get a drink and be ready to sing and, and join us on the Zoom link. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie, for being here oh, with us. My today. pleasure. Thank you all of all of Unity Church there. Love being with you. And we are so grateful. You so half great. an hour. Yes, I'm going to I'm going to pray us out with our prayer of transformation. Join with me and then I'll see you right on the other link soon okay. the light of god surrounds us i am light the love of god enfolds us i am love the power of god directs us i am power the presence of god watches over us i am presence wherever we are god is and always shall be and we you are divine thank you beings of love and light i'm so grateful that you're here with us i will see you in a few minutes with charlie on the other side Bye. Blessings, blessings, blessings. blessings.